Right now on KSAT.com, did you catch this video on your social media feed? A wedding proposal at an HEB took an employee by surprise. Viewer can't see the proposal, but they saw the stunned employee who witnessed the event stop in his tracks with his tamale cart. You can check it out right now on KSAT.com. We'll head the next hour of GMSA, another Uvalde official facing scrutiny for their actions or inaction at Robb Elementary School. We'll tell you who it is and why. And checking Transguide right now. Heavier traffic, 35 and Topper Wine. There's I-10 at Days of Bala. Now at six, new questions following the tragedy in Uvalde. What we're now learning from a new report about the Uvalde Sheriff on the day of the shooting and the new concerns being raised. Plus, these three viruses are all making it very difficult for us to practice routine medicine. The important news for parents this morning, why concerns are growing again about what they're calling the triple demic. What you need to know to keep you and your family safe. And another warm start to your December morning. 70 degrees right now and things are going to warm up a little more this afternoon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. We've made it to Thursday. It is December 8th. Thanks for joining us. Not quite time for those holiday sweaters, but maybe next week. The countdown has begun. We're waiting long term for our next cold front. Mike says it's in the extended forecast. Yeah, we got to wait about five, six more days. Mm -hmm. It's going to be coming through on Tuesday. So until then, what you see is what you get. Thank you. For did I read your sense. mind? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> Indeed, because uh, yeah, what you see is the same thing as uh, yesterday morning, although not as much in the way of fog. We've got a little bit more of a breeze, so that's helping to prevent some of that fog. But I mean, there are hints of it here and there. As a matter of fact, uh, visibility has dropped now just in the past 10 minutes uh, around Pleasanton to two miles and more fog heading down 37. Also out there along the, the Rio Grande Valley, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, mile and a half visibility, and then hints of it going up 35. So just be on the lookout. And as we go into the rest of the morning, we will see some some more of this fog trying to kind of move in and thicken up in places. A couple of sprinkles are actually showing up on radar out there in parts of the hill country of uh, Concan, Lakey. Not much, but just something to show on radar instead of just mist and, and light drizzle, things like that. 71 in town, 69 comfort, 68 burning stage numbers. I mean, we're just way, way out of whack as far as temperatures are concerned. We are going to be close to a record high again this afternoon. I don't think we're going to be hitting it, but it, we will be in that vicinity. Mold is on the, uh, the moderate side and temperatures, like I said, are going to be uh, pretty much holding steady over the next couple of hours, maybe fluctuating a degree or two here or there, and then we'll start to see some sunshine late this morning 76 at noon and a high temperature makes it all the way up to 82 degrees and at times we'll have even a lot more clear skies and sunshine than clouds kind of like what we had yesterday so again that's going to help to really warm things up we will uh, look ahead to that front not for the weekend, though. It's going to be a warm weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Good morning, <laughs> sir. What's going on? Hey, well, you know what? Traffic has remained steady for the last hour or so, Mike, but obviously getting a little bit busier out there now that we are at 6 a.m. 35 at Pine. We obviously see a lot more folks out there as well. I did at the Y, a very close up shop there. Not sure if our friends at Transguide are trying to pick up something from that location, but I'll check in with them in a little bit, get them on the phone, find out what's going on out there. 281 at Spruce Wood, uh, just a little quiet there as well, but in other areas it is getting a lot busier. 35 at Topper Wine is one of those spots, but getting you to the map, still pretty green out there, which is great. And if you have to head into the Alamo City, good news there as well. You are in the green. I-10 westbound if you're traveling in from Seguin, 29 minutes is what you can expect at this point. A little more than half an hour traveling in from 87 in those northbound lanes from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, it's a 29 minute drive time. So this is expected at this point, but in the next few minutes, we will likely see a lot more folks out there as morning rush is getting closer and closer. But I wouldn't say right now is the time to rush out the door. Enjoy your morning. Enjoy these roadways. 10 at Vance Jackson. Let's get one last peek around town where it's just getting a little bit busier, but thankfully traffic is still pretty tranquil. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. New details this morning as another Uvalde County official is facing scrutiny for their action or inaction at Robb Elementary. 
Uvalde County's sheriff has said he thought his response to the shooting was adequate. This morning, CNN is reporting that Sheriff Ruben Nolasco knew about the calls for shots fired on the school's campus, but diverted to a shooting at a home nearby. And that's where he found a woman shot in the head. The shooter's grandmother, who identified her grandson as the attacker, Video shows the sheriff arrived at Robb Elementary at 1149. That is 16 minutes after the gunman entered the school. CNN says Nolasco mentioned DPS was coming, but they needed to figure out who was in charge. And this all comes as some of the families of the Uvalde victims are in Washington. Jade joined the 10th annual National Vigil for All Victims of Gun Violence. The families of Lexi Rubio and Jackie Casada stood in solidarity with the families of the Sandy Hook shooting. President Joe Biden was also there. We've seen you turn pain into purpose. Together, we've made some important progress. Most significant gun law passed in 30 years, but still not enough. The vigil called for ban on assault weapons. Next week will mark 10 years since 26 people were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary. Other top stories this morning, starting with one that sparked nationwide attention, a staged kidnapping to cover up the death of a child. Now the grandmother who pleaded guilty in the case will do no prison time. Beatrice Sampaio reached a plea deal convicted of tampering with evidence in the case. She had been ordered to make a $1,000 donation to Child Save and ordered to pay a $1,500 fine, plus serve 10 years probation. This comes after the eight-month-old King J. Davila was killed back in 2019. His body was only found after his father directed police to a field where his body was discovered hidden in a backpack. The search for a missing camper coming to a sad end. The Kamal County Sheriff's Office says they found the body of Amir Ali yesterday afternoon. Ali was visiting from Houston and camping with friends. Investigators say he went for a walk Friday night but never returned. Hours later, his belongings were found near Canyon Lake. A dive team found Ali's body in Canyon Lake. Well, now to a traffic stop more than a year and a half ago, but it continues to cast a shadow over the tenure of Gray Forest Mayor Mandy Waldrop. High-ranking members of the city's police department claimed Waldrop exaggerated the incident and stated falsely that force was used against her. The agency's entire administration then resigned, forcing Gray Forest to suspend police operations and ask Bear County Sheriff's deputies to patrol their streets. The issue continues to divide residents. Soon after she got elected, there was um, a lot of drama around the police force that was, you know, uh, perhaps a model police force. Overall, the police force that we had, if it was model, they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing anyways. Right now on KSAT.com, you can watch the full KSAT investigate story. They explain what a facelift for Gray Forest Police could look like while controversy within the city rages on. This morning, the number of COVID, flu, and respiratory illnesses are going up across America. As ABC's Justin Finch explains, the climbing cases are straining hospital resources in parts of the country. Hospitals nationwide are stretched to their limits amid surging cases of the flu, RSV, and COVID. From New York State, these three viruses are all making it very difficult for us to practice routine medicine. To Texas. Our hospital is full. Our ICU is full. 80% of adult hospital beds are full, the highest peak since the Omicron surge. And now hospitals are seeing COVID cases rise again. The CDC director urging Americans to consider masking and get their flu and COVID vaccines. We are seeing high rates of flu higher than we've seen this time of year in over a decade. With an earlier than expected spike, some local pharmacies don't have enough supplies of over-the-counter cold and flu medication on hand. The White House saying the supply chain for those medicines is strong. My grandson, who's in second grade, still wears a mask. In Maine, respiratory illnesses are forcing some schools to close. Nevada now fast-tracking nursing licenses to handle a flood of pediatric patients. It's unusually high so early in the year. We worry about what's going to happen later on this month after the holidays. She had low oxygen, which they call hypoxia, and um, a fever, and they said that they needed to admit her right away. This family says their toddler had to wait almost a full day in the ER before a hospital bed opened up. After four days of treatment, she's now recovering from RSV, the flu, and a collapsed lung. 
And for those looking for over-the-counter treatments, try checking several stores or shopping online. And doctors say generic versions of your go-to medications are also an option. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Now to our San Antonio Spurs. There's some good news. Coach Greg Popovich will be back on the court tonight as they take on the Houston Rockets. The Silver and Black still hoping to snap that 11-game losing streak to the second-worst team in the NBA Western Conference. Right now, the Spurs being the worst. Coach Pop had missed a couple of games after a minor medical procedure, but he was back at practice yesterday. So we're hoping for the best tonight as they hit the court. Tip-off 7.30 right here at the AT&T Center in San Antonio. UTSA is getting ready to celebrate their conference USA championship with a river parade. The Roadrunners are back-to-back -back conference champs with their win over North Texas last Friday. And the Rowdy River Rally is scheduled for Friday night at 7 at the Arneson River Theater. Next up, UTSA will take on Troy at the Duluth Trading Care Bowl in Orlando next Friday. All right, check them out, folks. These are the new uniforms for the San Antonio Brahmas of the XFL. They were unveiled yesterday with both helmets and uniforms reflecting new head coach Heinz Ward's influence with the colors of black and gold, the same he wore when he played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Time now, 610 and 70 degrees for now. Still to come, Texas and Indiana have joined the growing list of states cracking down on the popular social media app TikTok. That's ahead in your GMA first look. And after the break, a look at some of the stories trending right now on KSET.com. But first, outside with live cam on your Thursday, one day closer to the weekend. Heavy traffic on Loop 410 by San Antonio International Airport. The clouds are kind of hanging around. Deja vu all over again in the weather department. The owner of a Northside restaurant is uh, back open after his business was the target of a smash and grab. Immediately going straight to the the terminals, there was square terminals. That's all he took, but the owner says the cleanup and replacement cost of the door was more than the items taken. He knew thieves had targeted other nearby restaurants, but never thought he'd be one of them. Ken Gordon of Alamo Door System says thieves tend to stay away from front door stores that have some sort of barrier. Create a, a deterrent at your business that makes the perpetrator more inclined to go somewhere else. And so it doesn't have to be uh, this, this tank or this fortress necessarily, uh, but if it, if it looks and it appears that it's much more difficult to get into your business uh, without making a lot of effort or noise or the risk of getting apprehended, then the likelihood is they're going to go someplace else. Now they're being Says the costs really depend on how strong of a barrier an owner wants to pay for. The stronger the barrier, the longer it takes a criminal to break in. And again, police are warning local teens and their parents about the dangers of Orbeez guns. They say unsuspecting citizens have been shot with these gel balls. Now, they posted a warning to Facebook yesterday afternoon saying they have received multiple 911 calls about these guns. Police say it is virtually impossible to tell the difference between an Orbeez gun from a real gun. And they suggest that only be used in a controlled and supervised environment. Firefighters in England warning people about a dangerous TikTok trend after an apartment fire last month. Fire crews in Derby, England say the fire was caused by the failure of a homemade heater using tea lights to heat up terracotta pots. People in the UK are in the midst of an energy crisis and looking for ways to heat their homes, but officials are warning people everywhere to avoid this one. And time now, 616. I was looking at the trans guy cameras. They look okay right now, but let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Okay is a good word to describe it at this point. Steph, uh, you know, really traffic does pick up at this uh, hour, but uh, thankfully no major issues, just a little bit more busy. And you can see it there, 35 at Pine. Now, 10 at the Y, we have this shot, and we noticed, if you know, remember, a little while ago, our friends at Transguide had a very close shot of the streets there. That's because they picked up some road debris, but didn't spot anything there from that particular shot. This is reported in the northbound lanes of 35 as you approach I-10. So just again, something to be on the lookout for. Make sure that you are very vigilant when you get the day started and get the morning rolling. But giving you a wide look at the map, thankfully still very quiet out there, but we know that there will be some scattered road work taking place in and around the Alamo City. Uh, we will get to that right now. Again, just a quick reminder, State Highway 16 Bandera Road. There we go. Uh, mentioned this just a few minutes ago, but just as a quick reminder, because we're getting closer to this hour, uh, utility work will begin at nine in the morning and should wrap it through in the afternoon, but we do know those text dot crews get out there just a little bit earlier. This should wrap on Friday, December 9th, at least a part of it. Alternating lane closures in both directions right there from loop 1604 to Diamond K trail is what you
you can expect to see out there. But overall, it doesn't look like the road uh, work has really impacted a whole lot of traffic from the overnight hours. But as we get closer to morning rush, we'll continue to see some of those slowdowns that begin to take place. Thank you, Stephen. And from mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or anybody just woke you up to get you ready for school, here's what you need to wear to school today. Mm, not a Some, jacket. <laughs> something not hot. <laughs> right. Because, uh, maybe a little light jacket this morning if there's some mist out there. There, there have been a couple of sprinkles in parts of the hill country, uh, perhaps some mist this morning, but you know, not any big deal. And then later on this afternoon, 82 high temperatures. So, wow. yeah, it's shorts and flip flops basically yeah. this afternoon, t shirts, and that's going to be the case for the next couple of days but yes fear not sweaters by next week yay all right Aww. talking about elf on the shelf here's an elf big adult elf on a shelf with a lot of donuts uh, there so oh those look good what's that say don't worry i'm back ready for fun don't know how much i've been missed don't not don't do not Donut. worry, live elf is harmless. Wouldn't it be funny if her name was Claire? It was like Claire on a chair hey. instead of <laughs> elf on a shelf. <laughs> Donut, forget how awesome I am. That's right. cute. I love I'm just that. looking at that right there. Wow. Who wants to run get donuts? Not me. All right. Make a quick stop. So anyway, uh, anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. We've got Bob. Uh, Usual start to the morning. Some fog, not bad in and around town, although visibility has dropped down as you're going down 37 in toward Pleasanton now at just a mile and three quarters. Some fog around New Braunfels, hint of it there in Gonzales, but more off to the uh, west along the, the Rio Grande, just a quarter mile visibility out there in Del Rio. Temperatures are just way off the charts for this time of year. The normal high is 66, the normal low is 44. This is where we are in the upper 60s and low 70s around here. As I mentioned, a couple little sprinkly showers are trying to show up here and there. I think this kind of overdoes it there a little bit, but uh, there's you know one or two of them out in portions of the hill country, not amounting to amounting to too much of anything. And for us, we've got this flow coming in here out of the southwest, and that's feeding in all the moisture. Then it's more wintry weather up to the north. What's going to help bring a front through is a low, which is out here, kind of. Uh, developing in the Gulf of Alaska. So what that will do is move down along the coast and then come inland as we go into next week and that will help pull the front down through here. We're going to have a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today. Same thing tomorrow and that helps to get us into the upper 70s, low 80s. Then on Saturday, there's going to be a couple of showers around here. Now this is kind of broad brush. It's going to be 20% I think at best for a chance of rain. Same thing on Sunday and then we go into Monday, maybe even a couple of uh, little sprinkly showers around in the morning. Lots of clouds in the afternoon, but then Tuesday is when that front starts to approach. So once again, chance for a couple of showers and then that all pushes on out of here as the front comes on in and that will be during the day on Tuesday. So we start off somewhat on the mild side, but then temperatures will be dropping down later on in the afternoon to closer to normal readings. Also, we will keep the humidity around through Tuesday, but then that drops off as we go on into the latter part of the day and then into Wednesday and Thursday. There's the really cold air and as you can see, it gets progressively warmer down to the south, sort of a zonal pattern, which means you don't get any big changes coming about here. And we've got this southerly flow of the jet stream coming in from the southwest. That just pulls in all the moisture around here. The northern branch of the jet just keeps all the really cold air up there to the north of us. But there comes that low. And like I said, that will continue to work its way in our direction. We still keep the moisture pumping on in here over the weekend, first part of the week. But then during the day on Tuesday, that pulls another front through here, and that will finally bring some of that cooler air coming on in here by Wednesday and then getting cooler by Thursday and Friday. 76 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature makes it up to 82. And again, like yesterday, at times we had a lot more in the way of clear skies than clouds, so that'll be the situation again today. And then we go into tomorrow, we do it all over again. Same thing on Saturday. A couple of showers here and there over the weekend. I mean, I wouldn't count on really any rain. And then Monday, Tuesday, about the same situation. That front moves through during the day on Tuesday. And so we'll be down to 65 degrees, closer to normal readings, both uh, for the high and the low on Wednesday, which will be nice and then cooler than normal by Thursday. I don't know if we can keep wearing Christmas ties if Mother Nature doesn't get with the program here. And then it's going to pull out. Yes. Things. We're going to 
put our foot yes. down wow. and, and wear them anyway. Crank the AC down in here. There you go. Yeah, yeah. just make it feel a little more Christmassy. She's going to wear an Antarctic parka suit. <laughs> we can have our way. <laughs> no. 622, 70 degrees. And Apple is introducing a new data protection for iCloud iMessages. Just ahead, what you need to know. This is how it feels to do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing. In as little as two weeks, Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Imagine that. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, cracking down on TikTok. I like all of you. The social media giant accused of being a malicious and menacing threat by Indiana's attorney general. The state filing two separate lawsuits against TikTok and its Chinese parent company, ByteDance, accusing them of threatening privacy and child safety. The platform has really stressed that it's primarily on an entertainment site. TikTok has said that it has never turned over data to the Chinese government, but but U.S. policymakers have not been, been convinced by that. TikTok telling ABC News they are confident they'll satisfy all reasonable U.S. national security concerns. So will other states follow suit? And what does this mean for TikTok users? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, Apple cranking up security features. The company's letting users boost encryption to their iCloud accounts to make sure the data is decrypted only on trusted devices. The new protections also shield data from government and law enforcement officials. Bitmoji-style 3D avatars are now available on WhatsApp, so everyone can now use their virtual face as a profile picture or as part of a sticker pack. And the customized character you create also works on other media pl platforms, including Facebook and Instagram. Google is out with its most popular searches for the past year. The top trending search globally was Wordle, the game that became a way, a way of life for so many. Other notables include Queen Elizabeth, along with almost anything related to the midterm elections. Not surprising. Time now, 627, 70 degrees for now. Still ahead in the next half hour, the search for answers continues after four college students were killed in Idaho. We're keeping a close eye on that case. And a quick look out there with Transguide now looking at some problems at I-35 at Topperwine. Steven says it's southbound, but we're going to be checking in with him very soon. The verdict is in for a case we've been following gavel to gavel. Former Border Patrol agent Juan David Ortiz guilty of capital murder. We'll show you how it all came to a close. Plus, more attacks on power companies are coming to light. What the FBI is learning after the massive outage in North Carolina. Outside with live cam as we wait for the sun to come up. The fog and mist doesn't seem to be quite as bad this morning compared to other mornings this week. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday. It is December 8th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good week so far. And don't worry, you'll get to wear that Christmas sweater eventually. But until then, Christmas ties abound, and Mike Ostrage mm -hmm. has brought the snowmen. Or Christmas earrings. Oh, that's I right. Just, yes, 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 yes. I just, uh, can there's, there's snowmen is it, also. Is it possible to, to zoom, just get a quick little shot there? Maybe or later. Uh, we'll, we'll, get it, we'll get it later. But <laughs> Maybe yeah, later. So you got to wear the accessories, but yes. the sweater is going to come later on in the week as far as uh, dressing in Christmas sweaters and coats and scarves and everything else because you yeah, don't want to do it this morning. Yeah, the fog is not as bad. I think one of the reasons for that is the fact we do have a bit of a breeze out there this morning. Wind is out of the south. It was about to 10 miles per hour. It's slackened up slightly. Dew point 7167, excuse me, 
Temperature 71, dew point 67. Bunch of humidity out there. We do have hints of fog in the area going down 37 in toward Pleasanton, mile and three quarters. You know, a little bit Hondo, Castroville, Bernie stage. So just kind of be on the lookout over the next uh, couple of hours. A lot more over to the west around Del Rio. Hints going up 35 and some along the coastal plain. But again, not as bad as what it has been the past couple of uh, mornings. Although uh, one thing, along with some of the mist and drizzle that really light fine stuff out there. There's actually a couple of sprinkles in parts of uh, western Bandera County. Con Canyon had a couple of those uh, moving up in toward Lakey. Not anything of any consequence, just sort of a, a gee whiz that we're seeing something show up on radar. 71 here in town, 70 Balverde, 69 in Helotus. Again, temperatures are just way above where they should be. Normal low is 44 degrees. That is in the forecast, though, way down the road. we got to wait a few more days. Uh, no more, no sweaters for the next couple of days. Mold is on the moderate side. So as far as this morning, yeah, a little bit of fog here and there. Some mist out there. We're going to have a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today, sort of like yesterday, where at times there were more clear skies. And we are going to be up in the low 80s again today. Then tomorrow, or going into the weekend, I should say, tomorrow is going to be a lot like today. Upper 60s, upper 70s for the lows and the highs and a lot of clouds, maybe even a couple of showers over the weekend. Just one or two of them. Not really any big deal. Start off very warm next week. Then that front comes through on Tuesday. So looks like by Wednesday we should be able to wear a nice Christmas sweater to go with the, the beautiful earrings over there. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, any problems out there, Stephen? Uh, unfortunately, Mike, uh, we do have a problem here, and it's uh, an area where we tend to see a lot more traffic. 35 at Topper One. All right, I'm going to step out of the shop. We can actually see some of those flashing lights out in the distance. A crash being reported in those southbound lanes, and unfortunately, it's that area southbound. A lot of folks are making their way into the Alamo City uh, just past 1604. So this is going to lead to some pretty big delays, and that's exactly what we're seeing here on the TransGuide camera. As of right now, no information on this crash, but hopefully everyone is doing okay out there as always. But we see the flashing lights. Traffic is not looking good in those southbound lanes, and we see it right there along our map. 35 southbound near Shin Oak Drive is where we have that reported. This is according to text dots. So as I mentioned, anytime there's an issue there, expect to see a slowdown and plan your commute ahead of time. I'll be looking for some solutions and maybe we can find a way around that mess, but just watch out for now. Uh, jump down here really quick. Road debris looks like it has cleared off of I-35 northbound at I-10, so better news to report there. But as we give you a wide look at the map, we have entered morning rush and we will continue to see slowdowns take place at least up until a little past 830 this morning. We see one taking place already right here along US 90 in those eastbound lanes as you approach 1604 northwest side as usual. And of course, because of that crash, we are going to see a lot more of a slowdown here along 35 southbound. Now check out that travel time. We are approaching the red there 58 minutes if you're planning to head in to the downtown area from New Braunfels, and that is likely due to that crash that we are seeing out here on the TransGuide camera. But it's an area we will watch closely. I'll get our friends at TransGuide on the phone to find out if we can get any more updates. But for now, watch for those first responders. Mark, Steph. New evidence leading to an arrest in an old murder case. San Antonio police say cell phone records led them to arrest Abel Angel Riojas III. He's accused of killing a 16-year-old near a playground and injuring another in a shooting back in April. Riojas did off, not offer a defense when he was walked in front of our cameras late yesterday. Police say he shot both victims near the Westway Apartments on Culebra. Officers don't know the motive, but they say Riojas knew one of the victims. Investigators say he claimed he was at the complex dropping off a friend, then walked home after his car stalled. But police say phone records show Riojas was not at home, as he claimed. Another witness told police Riojas tried to get into their apartment after the shooting, but they forced him out. Riojas is charged with murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The verdict is in for a former Border Patrol agent convicted of killing four women. Bear County jurors found Juan David Ortiz guilty of capital murder. He automatically received a sentence of life in prison without parole, convicted for killing four women in Laredo back in 2018. The defense says Ortiz will file an appeal. Ortiz will be held in the Bear County Jail until he is transported to another facility. We have full coverage of the trial on our website at KSET.com. So-called disease detectives are trying to track down any more potential cases of tuberculosis here in San Antonio. So far, there's one case of the respiratory illness with ties to two local high schools. Case links Clark High School and Brandeis High School, both within the Northside Independent School District. 
Metro Health says the person who tested positive for TB is isolated and a presentation was held for faculty and staff at both schools. The infection typically affects the lungs. Parents who have questions should call the Metro Health TB Chest Clinic. Well, chopping your morning headlines, a Border Patrol agent is dead after an ATV crash while patrolling along the border in South Texas. The crash happened early yesterday near Mission along the border with Mexico. The agent tracking a group of people who had crossed the border illegally. Fellow agents found him unresponsive and tried to help, but he died at the hospital. Well, now to the latest on the mystery surrounding the murder of four college students in Idaho. As ABC's Ike Ajaji explains, police have released new video they hope will provide new leads in the case. For the first time, detectives in Idaho are releasing body camera footage, hoping it can provide new leads in the case of those four murdered college students. Moscow 77. The videos show officers on patrol in Moscow, Idaho, in the early morning hours of November 13th, around the time investigators believe Zainer Kernadel, Ethan Chapin, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonsalves were killed in a home near the University of Idaho. Taking out 21. Yeah. In one video, officers are seen issuing citations to three teens for underage drinking. An apartment complex across the street from the victim's home is visible, just steps away from the officers. Investigators say the people in the videos have been cleared, and the incidents have nothing to do with the murders. But they've released the video, hoping someone familiar with the area is able to spot something, anything out of place. It can be used from a historic standpoint. That information could potentially become relevant later in the investigation because you just never know. It comes as detectives announce they need help locating a white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra, like this one spotted near the murder scene. Investigators believe the driver or any possible passengers may have critical information to share regarding this case. That can mean a number of things. It could be that they have eliminated all the cars in the proximity of the victim house. This could be just an elimination. It could be a witness or it could be a suspect. Investigators do not have the car's license plate number and no suspects have been named. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, New York. Time is running out for Congress to pass two massive spending bills. The House had been expected to take up the National Defense Authorization Act this week, but Republicans say their support hinges on ending the military's vaccine mandate. Meanwhile, funding for the broader federal government could expire next week. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says the country might have to settle for a short-term bill that lasts just into the new year. Well, there are new concerns rather, about the security of our power grid. This comes just days after that brazen attack on the power substations in North Carolina. We learned overnight about intentional damage at several other facilities across the country. ABC's Ike Ajachi has details. This morning, more power companies are reporting physical attacks on electric grids to the FBI. At least five power substations were reportedly attacked in Oregon and Washington last month. The power companies are not saying how the attacks were carried out, but one briefly cut electricity to customers outside Portland, according to our station, KATU. And we have confirmed that this was malicious intent, this was no accident. It comes after authorities in North Carolina say a gunman opened fire on two Duke Energy substations last Saturday, leaving entire towns in Moore County without power. Some homes just got power back last night. You think nothing of when you turn on a light switch, but whenever you haven't had power for a few days and you turn on a light switch, it's, it, it means it's just everything. Detectives have recovered shell casings at the two scenes in North Carolina, and federal search warrants have now been filed in the case. But authorities have not said whether the warrants were issued to a person or people local to the area. I think we're just days and moments and hours away from catching the culprit that did this tragedy. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, New York. And back here at home happening today, CPS Energy wants to hear from you about the future of energy in San Antonio. They say there is a need to retire power plants and plans to invest more in clean energy. Tonight at 7, the utility is hosting a virtual town hall. We have a link to register on our website at kset.com. Right now, 641, 70 degrees. And the holiday feast continues. After the break, how to make your favorite foods healthier with some simple swaps. 
trying to suck in my gut during this next story. During holiday gatherings, you may be eating twice the recommended daily calorie intake, and all those extra calories can mean more pounds. That's right, but as Nancy Alvarez explains, there are some simple ways to make your favorite not-so-healthy holiday foods healthier. Family, friends, and food. Lots of food. The sweet potato casserole. I really like stuffing. I could put gravy on anything. And all that gravy can add up to extra pounds pretty quickly. Holistic cardiologist Mona Shaw shares some healthier choices. For deviled eggs, switch out the mayonnaise with olive oil or yogurt. Better yet, you scoop out the yolk, uh, mix avocado in there and make a guacamole and put it back in it. For mashed potatoes, mix half mashed potatoes with half mashed cauliflower. That's 50% less of the, the carb part. As for the sweet potato casserole, forget the butter, sugar, or honey. Roast them and add a little pumpkin pie spice and nutmeg. You'll still get the flavor. For an even tastier green bean casserole, why not just roast them with a little bit of like almonds on it or garlic and, you know, put a little balsamic vinegar and oil. And always opt for turkey. Which is like a leaner, you know, than having ham with all the extra sodium. What about the eggnog? One cup can cost you up to 350 calories and is loaded with saturated fat and added sugars. If you want to do eggnog, they actually, there's a brand uh, called Califia. They make an almond milk eggnog. It's actually pretty good, but it's lower fat, lower sugars. With a few healthy food swaps to help your waistline survive the holidays, I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. All right, time check is 646. Big problems along 35. This is a shot from Ingle Road. I was speaking to our friends at TransGuide on the phone. We have a few issues out there along this corridor, and this is just outside of New Braunfels. Notice how we have at least a few lanes blocked off there by first responders. Traffic is moving very slow, even in both directions of the north and southbound lanes, but a crash has been reported where we do have a fire department on the scene as well. So not a good sign here, and this is again just outside of New Braunfels. Now we are working to pinpoint the location but based on our map, that slowdown, you can see it there in the southbound lanes of I-35 as you approach Ingle Road. Again, this is just outside New Braunfels. But the bigger issue is going to be when you come a little bit further into town, right here along 35 southbound at Shin Oak Drive, where we do have another crash reported. Now, uh, again, speaking to our friends at TransGuide, we know that there's a possibility they may shut down the southbound lanes, but we have to get a uh, location exactly where that will start to take place and when it will take place. But of course, we will keep you updated. Right now, Slowdowns are what you can expect as we take you back into the metropolitan area. That's expected now that we are in morning rush, but check out those travel times. If you're traveling in from New Braunfels right now, we are at more than an hour. We're in the red 79 minutes, so make sure to just plan ahead. Look for those alternative routes. I'm trying to scope through some, but 35 is just riddled with problems right now. Again, this shot, just not a pretty sight there along 35 at Ingle Road, guys. Mm. Thank you, Steven. It's Not good at all. Getting all right. to look a lot like Christmas around yes. here. Yes, does it feel yes. like it, but look like it. Yes. Came into the station yesterday for the, the station Christmas party, and on my desk was a small little package from Mrs. Guajardo, and I've shown these in years past. Thank you. And oh, it is, I believe ornaments. that is needlepoint, yeah. and here's the gingerbread man, the, uh, the gift, and then the little uh, snow globe, and the card says, when Christmas snow is on the ground and colored lights are all around, I hope this gift will help make your Christmas bright over the wow. years and and uh, all of us weather folks got them you got them thank as you well. so much mm -hmm. yes That's great You've got about a dozen of these or more and and keep them at home thank you that just puts us in the Christmas yes. spirit thank you again yes for doing thank that. yes 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 over the years yes. appreciate it thank and you. speaking of Christmas oh. Eve, there we go Let's see this camera oh yeah the little snowman wow. so it doesn't feel like you can't it's snowy <laughs> Can't wear a snowman but, sweater right now. Yeah, so. but you know we can pretend it is We're December. Will it to happen? Yes. Or you can just take a bunch of sugar and spread it all over the counter mm -hmm. and then pretend like you uh, have like this, like this out here. Yes, and the, so the little elves on a shelf can. Oh, how stuff. creative! <laughs> That's cute. I, I love, love that. Are those marshmallows? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. With the the wall set up there and the bigger marshmallows and those little snowballs there. That's so. fun. Do they come with shades or do they make little? I shades for this guy. I, I don't know because he's got the regular <laughs> outfit, and then 
He's like got the little Christmas sweater on. That's there. fun. I love that. <laughs> yeah, everybody's been sending in a whole bunch of Elf on the Shelf uh, pictures, so thank you very much for that. All right. Um, yeah, uh, earrings about the extent of the uh, the Christmas wear or a tie because you don't want to put on a sweater this morning. It is very warm, very humid out there. Visibility has increased a little bit. It's gone up slightly there in Pleasanton. Just hints of fog around the area. Not bad, so it's not as bad as what we've had. Now, a lot of it uh, over there along the Rio Grande, some down here along the coastal plain, but again, just kind of be on the lookout for it. Some mist and drizzle are possible. We've got a couple little uh, sprinkles in portions of the, the hill country. And throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures don't move at all. Then we'll see some sunshine thrown in by noon. And there's still that little 10%, maybe a leftover bit of mist here or there. And then sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today, sort of like what we had yesterday in a high temperature up to 82 degrees. So we are going to be just way above normal. And it stays very humid for the next couple of days. But then the humidity drops off during the day on Tuesday. Tuesday as the next front moves on through here. So as far as high temperatures, we remain very warm all the way through the weekend. Then Tuesday we stay at 70. 65 about normal Wednesday and much cooler on Thursday. And you look at the low temperatures, which are going to be way out of whack and way above normal. But then we drop down by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So finally, maybe a Christmas sweater by latter portion of next week today. 76 at noon, mostly cloudy skies and then more sunshine mixed in with the clouds later on today. 82 for a high temperature tomorrow. More of the same, um, maybe a couple of showers over the weekend. Just one or two of them here and there. It's just going to be, you know, a stray sprinkle here and there. And then that front moves through on Tuesday. So finally, it'll feel more like December. Thank you for that, Mike. Yes, Welcome. we're excited. We appreciate it. 651 70 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, some simple things you can do to conserve water. Outside with live cam, we're going to wrap up GMSA after this break. Right now, taking a live look at Loop 410 and the uh, situation out the airport. Uh, again, heavy traffic, big problems on I-35. A wrap-up is coming up with Stephen Cabazos. Okay, time check, 6.55. We do still have problems here along 35 at Topper Wine, so watch out. Flashing lights out in the distance, a crash reported here in the southbound lanes that has led to some delays as you approach 16.04 near Shin Oak Drive. This is one of those big issues because the southbound lanes, a lot of folks travel through there. If you go any, up even further, we do have a crash also reported there in the southbound lanes at Ingle Road where you can where you see that there's a big red uh, stretch of red that is also building out there. Wide look at the map, though, as we take it back to the metropolitan area, we continue to see that same issue take place, but we're going to have to watch the roads closely. But for now, 35 is the biggest problem on the roads right now, Mike. We don't have too much of a problem as far as fog is concerned. Just be on the lookout over the next uh, couple of hours, especially going down 37. Very, very warm and humid out there, and we'll make it up to 82 later on today. Sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. More of the same tomorrow, maybe a shower or two over the weekend. And then that front's going to be moving through during the day on Tuesday. So finally, it will feel like December by the end of the next week. Not well, too bad. About time. I know. Yeah. And at least 70s on the weekend. We can handle that. I can. Yeah. I'll take next week. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. 17 days till Christmas. Don't panic, people. No. Nah. It's going to be okay. <laughs>